I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for taking time out of your schedule to join us for the fourth in the series of four community conversations. Um, we're going to follow a pretty similar process tonight that we have when we visited the high school and then the middle school. So in front of you, you've got a packet of information that talks about AFE, Adams Friendship Elementary School. Adams Friendship Elementary School was built and opened in 1993. There were additions shortly after the school opened. So there was an addition in 95, and then an addition in 97. And I can't tell you if it was on the left-hand side in 95, does somebody, does somebody know? Like if you go down the left hallway, where they crossed the T in 95 or 97, or when they extended the hallway, Oh, the right hand side was 95, where they extended the hallway, thank you Mr. Vicku, and then the left hand side where they kind of crossed the T at the end of the hallway was in 97. Adams Friendship Elementary School, AFE is in great shape. Um, it scores very, very well as a facility. The maximum capacity for Adams Friendship Elementary School which you wouldn't necessarily want to be at the maximum capacity, but the maximum capacity I believe is 602 students. And today, if we had all of the students from pre-K through fourth grade in the building, we'd be at about 447. But some of those students are electing to attend school virtually, so we aren't completely full. And we probably wouldn't want class sizes of <clears throat> mid to high 20s that uh, our friends at CESA 10 were thinking about. So the building is pretty, it's very well utilized right now with the number of students that we have in the building. Um, currently, and this is kind of an enrollment trend in our district, there are 50 students in 4K. 4K is not compulsory. Uh, that's not going to be in your sheets. That's just for, for your information. Uh, and we do have some 4K students that uh, attend the Head Start program in town. We have 67 students in kindergarten, 71 in first grade, 83 in second grade, 98 in third grade, and 82 in fourth grade. And that's if all the students were physically in this building. So again, we know that we have some students that are attending school virtually. And I want to focus just a little bit on the last page in your head. And if you've been to all four of these meetings, you can daydream for a little bit. Uh, but this last sheet is our third Friday counts. So these are the actual numbers of our third Friday counts from 2002-2003 school year through this school year in blue. They're also written on the table on the left-hand side. And then there's some projections. I believe those are yellow and orange for the next five years. So 18 years ago, in the 2002-2003 school year, on the third Friday count, which dictates the funding that we receive from the state, we were serving 2,150 students. On the third Friday in September of 2020, we were serving 1,403 students. So the difference is 746 less students this fall than 18 years ago. And that's a change that's not just germane to Adams Friendship. Most rural school districts in Wisconsin are experiencing steep declines in enrollment as our demographics change. I had the chance to talk to Joan Ballway today. She was in my office. She hears the same speech every time. She hears the same speech every time when she's in my office. 
And we were talking, I, that's why I had this sheet in my hand, because I was talking about our enrollment projections. And that dictates our funding. And then I was talking about the community. And when we did the study with the UW-Madison Applied Population Lab, the only two demographic areas where Adams County is growing is in the group that's 55 to 64, and then the group 64 and older. From the 2010 census to a projection of the 2020 census. So in every other category, 0 to 18, and then the 20s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, which you consider the traditional years for child rearing, we have a significant drop in population from the 2010 census to today, which is frightening from a school district perspective. Right? We're just not, not only are we aging in place, but we're, we're re attracting retirees, and we're just not seeing the number of kids in our buildings. The next part of the table and chart you have are the orange and yellow projections. So when we do our financial projection, we use a, a, a Barry tool from the Baird Financial Group, and they do an actuarial projection of what our student population most likely is going to look like into the future. We also did this study with UW-Madison Applied Population Lab that I referred to, and they also give you a projection. And they use different data sets to make those projections, but both of them are really close. And what they show is that over time, the next five school years will probably be serving another 250 less students. So our student population will be, according to their projections, which is the best data we have available, about 1,150 students. So 18 years ago, 2150. <clears throat> this fall, 1,400 basically. Two years from now, or excuse me, five years from now, 1150. So that dictates our finances, and it's going to dictate what our district looks and feels like into the future. Which is why we're having this meeting, and I'm glad that you're joining the conversation to help us think about what the future is going to look like for our school district. So with that, first of all, does anyone have any questions? So with that, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Roxanne Irie, the principal at AFE, and she's going to talk a little bit about the night. And then at the end, I'd like to summarize a little bit. Uh, if everyone can come back here, and we'll try to get you out of here at a very reasonable time. Thank you. All right. So we, Brandy and I, are going to be guiding into two groups based on um, your beautiful sign sheets and signatures. Hopefully, we can read your names correctly. But we are elementary teachers, so we can read a lot of things. I thought you were a little messy. We have three classrooms you're going to be visiting, and weather depending, we are going to walk outside. So you may want to keep your jackets with you. Hopefully, it's nice enough that we can go outside for a little bit and look at the playground. So the following students, the following students, <laughs> the following are going to go with me, and we're going to kind of huddle right here. So Chris Peterson, Dana Peterson, John, Kurt Mabey, Ronnie, Derek Curlis, Amber Jefferson, Chris Jefferson, Vicki Marcucci, Michelle Johnson, James Bays, Risa Evans, Derek Smith, Margot Beaver, Michelle McKesney, Justin Allen, Lisa Engel, Kevin Beaver, and Sam Wolf. And I can speak pretty loud so I don't need the microphone. The rest of you that were not called pretty much are coming with me. If you didn't sign a sheet, I think my group might be a little smaller so you can hop on to my group or if you choose, you can go with Roxy. Um, Frank Perez and er, Rick Pease, Jeff Presley, Kelsey Hall, Karen Perrick, 
Chad Reinhardt, Crystal Holmes, Barbara Grancy, uh, Nick Storman, Patrick Glatsky, Joel Johnson, Tammy Lowry, Lance Holber, Karen Holber, and Aaron Bonnet. And we're going to kind of meet over at this end. teachers this year. The class sizes has been very nice to keep it under the 16, whatever they think someone may be a little bigger now, but, and for Fayette, for my experience, 
you can have bigger classes, but it's also nice when Rick and I teach in that together. It does get really loud, and if you have 20 kids, that's 40 in there for the two of us to talk. And um, But it's a great facility, and we do have, like, the mezzanine. We have the, the curtains, so we can have the two classes in there. So it is a great space for us to have. It just <coughs> volume-wise isn't necessarily great, depending on what we're doing. And we have it three times per week. Where when I first came here, it was five times a week, so that was really nice. But we had to cut that back to three times, which is the minimum that we can actually have. So we hope to keep um, the kids moving as much as we can. But it also, again, space-wise and time-wise, we have to fit the best we can. Um, the only thing is like the storage. We're using a lot of storage space for offices or classrooms or whatever we can right now. So the goal, I think, for it would be to get more space so we can store some of that stuff. And I think Roxy will show you the sheds out there. Those are pretty full. And stuff is all over the place. So just getting that in there and using the space and facilities that we can. So I think that's all. Yeah. So she talked about space. So um, back in that corner, um, because we kind of changed the structure of this room, that used to be kind of a practice area, and then it was a our tech office, and now it is actually a room office used by three other staff members, or sometimes they sit at the desk where Mary is at, because when COVID first our plant, this was going to be a fourth grade classroom. So uh, when that all came down, um, and then the number of students that went virtual, um, we eliminated that fourth grade room, and now it has become kind of more of a staff area to eat because students are eating in their rooms. Teachers need a place to go to eat. So a lot of them eat in here. Um, but then again, that office is shared by numerous other people. And she mentioned music and sound. So behind Justin is a door to one of our other offices. And Michelle probably can even attest when music is going on, you hear the music in those offices way over there because this isn't really soundproof. So using it as a classroom is very tough um, because it's, it's the noise level and students, no matter what age, are easily distracted. And when they hear music, sometimes they want to join in and then instruction is lost as well. But any questions for Mary or anything particular to this area here? I'm going to head out this way. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I think as far as the lights, these three lights only turn on when they turn the lights on. Over Is there. it? I don't even know which. we got two switches here that turn all these lights on. Yep. So they are we broken We were sitting up. here and they just <laughs> But yeah, it is. Yeah. Both lights. Those come on. Those will stay on. I believe. Because I wired it. So. Got it. Got it. So Mary talked about cutting places that have to make more space. Um, as you round this corner to your left will be the other side of the music room that we were just in. This is Brandy's office, uh, which we cut in half to make for one of our co-located providers. We bring a lot of outside agencies into our building so students don't have to leave and we need to provide the services for them. Instead of missing a day, they're missing an hour of class. So we talk a lot about cutting spaces in half to make more room. Here is one example. We're going to head into the library. typical library this year. Um, we originally had it slated for a second grade, second grade classroom, but again due to COVID and virtual learning, we replaced it with a four-year-old kindergarten group. So that's who's in the library in the front tip. 
The back half where you see the library books is not utilized this year due to COVID. If they want, they can request books and bring them out. But here's another time we divided space up to make use of it better. Um, behind this wall over here, um, we cut out a space and I say that's where the internet lives because that's really what's behind that wall is our internet. And then uh, we had a beautiful maker space where teachers and students could come and use a lot of technology and robotics and 3D printers and all that stuff. But due to COVID, we had to put it away. And right now that's kind of just a warehouse. So another storage space um, that we're using, but had to be um, utilized in a different way. This was actually a somebody's office at one point, one of the text offices, which we kind of moved out of there and we'll see their new place um, in a little bit. So we talked a lot, Mary talked about it, and you're gonna hear it from probably the majority of the teachers that you around class space, class size, um, this classroom probably has about 12 kids in it, 13 kids in it on any given day, depending on absences. And these are four-year-olds in here. Um, and they just, we're getting, the teachers are getting to know their kids a little bit better. Um, we've had a lot of uh, fewer discipline problems. Um, kids are making connections with other kids. And at four, that's really important. And imagine trying to play um, and eat lunch. Um, carpeting is a little difficult as well. Um, they do the best that they can. The door over here by Derek leads to a counseling office. Um, and the door on the other side of the copier here used to lead to a computer lab slash maker space, which is now a um, special ed classroom. So I'm trying to utilize all the space and um, maybe taking a few things away to make room for other things. So when you go out this door, we're gonna go to the right. You can look at the other half of the library and we're gonna keep winding around the corner and we're gonna to go to our next classroom. we can. Um, obviously Christmas lights and all that good stuff. Um, AC has been installed every so often. It does get quite warm in here so sometimes it fluctuates. I've been with 14 kiddos. They're moving around. They're not always at their seats but um, it does fluctuate to get really warm. Sometimes it gets cold but we make it do. Um, Another thing is we have random outlets. So there's like one over there, and then obviously my computer stuff. Um, there's no rhyme or reason, but we make do with what we have. Um, one of the best things that we have, they have done is put the microphone systems in. So on both sides they have microphones so I can be anywhere in the room and the kiddos can hear me. 
Um, for our bathrooms, the bathrooms are right down the hall, but there's only one girls and one boys, so there's only two stalls for girls and a, one stall for boys. So with the older kiddos, they tend to go to the bathroom more, so that tends to be a traffic jam area down there. Um, yeah, any questions for me? So Leah mentioned the microphone system, which isn't quite working like oh it no. typically does. But um, every classroom, a short of six right now, have that installed already. Um, it's been very nice, like she had said, that when she's across the room, that everybody can hear. Um, they also have in, um, on her <coughs> or at her monitor, there's a student microphone. So when students are yes. standing up in front of the classroom giving a talk, a book report, talking, whatever it is, the students have one too. So again, some of our kids talk a little quieter, and this allows everybody to hear, especially we can't be close to each other right now. Um, but even when there was non-COVID, it was great to have because everybody could hear what was going on. Um, and if there is, you're in the kindergarten classroom and it's free choice time, it's very easy for them to, whatever um, noise they make or call or whatever it is, signal to get cleaned up, it's very easy to be heard for everybody. So that's been a very nice addition that we've had to our building. And by the start of next year, every classroom should have one. So that's, again, been very good. Um, the other thing is, like Leah said, this is a third grade classroom. And all students 4K through fourth are one to one. Our little kids are pre-K even. And our kindergartners all have an iPad to take home to use. And all students in grades first through fourth do have a Chromebook or device. So there is one of the the carts. Um, students are expected to charge them when they come in. So typically those are empty. Um, they have all the chargers at home. What you'll see as we walk down the hall is some of those carts are out in the out in the hallway because students eat in their lunch, they eat lunch in their room as I said before. But those are really for the lunch people to put the lunches on. And you'll see bags outside their room because we have a fruit and vegetable grant. So they put their fruit and vegetables in there or their milks. But they needed the little tables for their classrooms, so they're using their Chromebook carts to kind of use that as a storage place for their lunches or anything else that needs to happen. So you'll notice that as you go down the hall. Um, there will also probably be some long lunch tables out there, unless they put them away, that they also used for students to go when they need a break from class. Um, in the past, we've always had desks outside the room. This one does, but you really can't use it for a student to take a break um, because of COVID and because of lunches or who knows what might be sitting on it. So they have those tables for students to work at right now. Um, we are going to make our way outside. Um, this is the second and third grade kind of wing here. So it is some kind of our middle group of kids. Um, when we go outside, we're going to talk a little bit about our recess zones. I don't know if it's snowing out there. Okay. It was early. It's three so feet. So we're going to head outside. I'll tell you a little bit about our recess area and other things that are on outside. And feel free to step in any of the classrooms and take a look at what they look like. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for coming. Thanks. Roxy, these two rooms are the 95 edition. Oh. That's when they built Grand Marsh. They added these two on. Did he talk about those when he was in there? He didn't talk about these two rooms. Okay. He talked about the, the additions. All right. So uh, Dr. Tom mentioned some additions. Um, you can kind of see the difference in the brick. These two rooms were added in 1995. We have a second grade classroom, um, this is Osborne, and a third grade classroom, this is Storman. Again, you can peek in and see the difference um, that they have. Can we keep the student for the student separation and anything like that? All right, everybody ready? 
I'll make it quick, I promise. Come on out. Also in the process of putting LED lights throughout all the classrooms that we can dim. The, the geese came to greet you. Oh, nice. So remember we talked a little bit inside about fire, about the fire storage. There's these two um, fire storage buildings, and I will tell you they are keeping full of capacity. Uh, we can always use extra storage. I mean, we've gotten bicycles and any type of equipment from Grand Marsh has come here. So upstairs in the mezzanine, there's even more. So trying to organize and all of that. So we want to make sure every kid has the opportunity to participate in those games. And right now with COVID, really we'd like everyone to have their own items. So we use these as storage. Um, the playground is divided into three zones. And students are, so every day they get to go to a different zone. Um, zone, one is kind of this area right here and so this is zone three which goes out to the play, uh, the green playground over here and the swings zone two is kind of that green and brown and the fidget spinner area the red the yellow the blue and zone one goes that way and we're going to walk by that which is our um, sand area and more for our little little kids so to keep them all separated, they're by cones, and at least they can sometimes see one grade and someone from the other grade trying to talk over the zone lines, right? Because they can't be with the other ones, but they want to be with the other ones. This has been a great addition because, again, it's just helped us eliminate a lot of behavior problems on the trilly zone. Are there some? Yes. Uh, but this has really kept things a little bit more close-knit and teachers are watching them and kids are kind of getting to know each other a little bit more and making it more personable. So we're going to head around them. You can wave as we go by. We thought maybe we'd meet out here. That's pretty good timing. Well, this is what we thought was going to happen. I know. to call Lake AFE. So out there kind of we're um, almost to the hill that's our sledding hill. So in the winter we have sleds for all the kids. And if they're in that zone, that's the time they get to use those. Um, but due to the frost and due to a very high water table um, and not much options, it's usually pretty flooded out here. Um, very muddy. They've added fill. They've done a lot of things. So we are glad right now we don't have the lake outside because kids come in muddy from head to toe. Because who at the age of seven doesn't like to play in the mud? <laughs> so it's kind of one of those natural consequences. They know that if they do it, they're going to be wet and they may have to sit in mud for a little bit. Um, but it's always fun to have it. And again, they've tried to fix it. It's just not, they just can't do to the water table right now, um, do anything for that. So. Again, this would be zone two, kind of working into zone one. Remember she talked about uh, windows. There's three classrooms that don't have windows. Um, I'm going to take you into a storage area that will become a classroom for some sped kids where we're actually going to add a window to that room. A nice outdoor classroom over there. Eventually, going to get electric out there as well. 
stored out here so here's more of our storage sheds out here and obviously where we park our school van nice problem to have more things that we have storage for are the best they can be. There also are two bathrooms in this hallway, um, typically used by our three-year-olds or those in 4K who are not toilet trained. And we do have quite a few of those. So we're just gonna walk in this room, down the hallway and again to the, your right is that storage, the bathrooms will be on your left. And we'll kind of end up coming out the next door. A few years ago, we, we took a closet and made that into a classroom yep. with a window. Yep. Yep. So we're gonna try to do the same here. We don't have the same tools. <laughs> right through here. This is the closet. You make this room into a classroom with a window behind that. Bathrooms. Cute little toilets. <laughs> Those are challenging for adults. <laughs> I wouldn't know that, but <laughs> I've been told. down one hallway and we're going to work down our last hallway. The other issue that we have here is internet. So going from one side of the building to the other, if you're walking with your device, um, whether it's a student or a staff, there's a lot of disconnection issues and waiting for things to be reconnected or sometimes they never reconnect once you go past a different access point. So that's also a concern that we have. 
Um, I think we have, as does the middle school, anything else about five Wi-Fi areas that we could um, connect to at any given time. So it just depends on where you're at in the building, because some work in other places and some don't. So again, those were the kindergarten classroom. We're going to go. There's kindergarten classrooms down this hallway, um, and if you want past the um, fountains. There is a door to your right. That's our speech and language office that houses three speech and language pathologists at any given time. So if you walk in there, there's not a lot of space to offer services. Um, most of the time we try not to have them here at the same time, but sometimes it does happen and they're trying to service students with speech difficulties all at the same time. So again, just trying to use the best spaces that we have and then moving them to other places if needed. So feel free to peek in that room. Again, it's right past the drinking fountains over there. an entire classroom. So when you walk by, um, this is an office space where she's running some virtual classes out of this space. This is a special ed teacher's room. Please feel free to go in, but again, we have a lot of spaces that you can't have an entire classroom and you can only use it for small groups. As well as the next door to your left, that's also a special ed room that's not large enough to house an entire classroom. Um, we are going to make our way right down here, and I have Mrs. Tully and Mrs. Lurie. We're going to talk to us a little bit about a few, um, some of the first grade items. Us. It's us. <laughs> it's you. All right, so yeah. this is Lori and this is Tully, both fifth grade teachers, or fifth grade, first grade teachers here at AMU. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. That's my case, Stacey, you thought, but. I was, I said in the first group, I don't think there's anyone I probably need to introduce myself to, but I'm Stacey Tully. I, um, this is year 34 in the school district. Um, lots more years of it, being an Adams County resident. I, this is my third year here, moved in at the close of Russia Creek. And I had 20, 29 years of kindergarten, moved to first grade last year, didn't get to finish the year with those kids, but I'm loving first grade this year. And we're loving having her. Um, Angie Laurie, this is my 26th year, I believe, in the district. Uh, my first 14 were at Pineland, teaching kindergarten, and then when Pineland closed, I moved to AFE, where I've been first grade the last 12 or so, 11. So, welcome. All right, yes, we're glad you're here. Uh, so what you're seeing right now 
and what you've seen coming down, this is our little first grade neighborhood, and Mr. David, we let him stay, he's second grade, but he, he joins <laughs> us too. But this is the little first grade neighborhood here. Most of the rooms here are around the same size. Um, this is a COVID first grade classroom. Um, everyone's had their own ideas about how to set this up and how to make this work this year. So you'll see you know, some distance between things as much as we can get. This room is set up for 14 kids right now. So what you would see if this wasn't a COVID year, you'd see a large group meeting area at the front, a larger rug, I have a larger one stored out at Grand Marsh. Um, we keep that here because as soon as you sit back here, it's very hard to see to the front. Um, so we, the students are here in their, in their seats the bulk of the time. Um, you would see not quite more um, common supplies. You'll see they all have their own you know, they have a clipboard and a whiteboard and their their own books and things like that. You would see you would see um, small group meeting areas. We've had to really we've really agonized over continuing with small group. It's really really important for the younger kids. And my my small group my normal small group table would be this one, and this is a kid table now. Um, tables that normally would have had four to six kids now have had two this year. Um, so there's been a lot of bartering and trading among us. What looks, you know, well, someone will push it out and then the next person will snark it up. And so I was able to get the one behind there for some small group. And then Angie and I kind of had to do necessity as the mother of invention. So we, we worked until we came up with the little kind of carol situation, you know, going <laughs> back there. And then, then we couldn't get our hands on our knees. So then we brainstormed, <laughs> found an old pool noodle. And, you know, so we can at least... Um, it's not ideal, it's not what we would like to be in terms of, you know, with the kids, but they love it and it's sprayed between each, each group of kids and they wait and, you know, they've been, they've been wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, common supplies, a library corner. Most, most rooms up until now would have had a, a library corner with tons of books out and little kid chairs and, you know, really inviting area and those are not here this year either. So we're looking forward to those coming back, looking forward to being able to go to our, our school library again and check out books. Um, silver lining of this though, we really have noticed a difference in how we have gotten to know our kids this year, how they've gotten to know each other and work together. Um, we're noticing it in our data with our behavioral, you know, write-ups or two. We, we definitely are noticing that, that individual attention so every teacher here would resoundingly say that the, the class sizes, like I said, this is 14 that we have in here right now. The class sizes being smaller is, has been a silver lining to that club. Um, you came by the bathrooms down there. I did a kind of a rough head count this morning and currently those two bathrooms down there, um, about 160 kids have to use those, those bathrooms down there. And it's just one of those things where if we have to wait for the kids to come back, we have to wait for the kids to come back. It's just that year. They're, they're wonderful and they'll wait down there, but one of the things that we really miss down here are sinks. And I noticed at the middle school tour that they had some of the portable sinks, you know, so that if you didn't need the bathroom, you could still scrub your hands. So. You know, and ideas for the future. I, if we are, you know, in this type of a situation again, maybe something like that. But yeah, the bathrooms, and also the rooms across from the bathrooms, which are right now a special ed room and a virtual. It's it's hard for them because the kids are patient and they'll wait, but they're not always that quiet while they're doing it. So yeah, it's it's there are silver linings as well. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the academic side. We are pretty, I shouldn't say pretty, we are really excited here at AFE with the direction. Um, we are going curriculum-wise. So for the last, I think I, I was telling Stacy, I was trying to think, when's the last time we had a reading curriculum adoption? And I'm thinking it's when we adopted our court in roughly 2004 or 2005. Um, and so we had moved to what's called a balanced literacy framework and it just wasn't what our kids needed to learn. And so we are really excited with the direction that the district has 
made the switch to structured literacy um, because I know Stacy and I talk all the time. We know that the way children learn to read is through like explicit direct instruction in things that are called phonemic awareness and phonics and vocabulary and fluency and comprehension. Those are like the big five. And what we were doing, it just wasn't hitting the mark. And so last year, we got to look at different reading curriculums. And we're talking more the K2 end of it. We went with a program called the Super Kids Reading Program. And behind you on the poster are the 13 Super Kids and one Super Dog. And they are introduced in kindergarten, starting with Cass, who loves to cook concoctions. And the kindergartners are learning the letter C. And then by mid-year, they've learned all those sounds, and now they're, blend, they're, they're using them to decode words and, and write words and all sorts of cool stuff. Then the super kids move to first grade with them and have first grade adventures. And then they move to second grade, the same super kids, and um, they, they're in school now. And the you second grade teachers, teacher. they, the problems that the super kids have in second grade are problems that the students have, like the same social dynamics, so it's really really cool how the, the <coughs> author or the book or how the author created it. Um, the kids have their favorite super kids. It's very engaging. When we first, we've got a parent in here. <laughs> they've, got their, they've got their favorite. Um, yeah. And at first when they talked to us, and some people were like, well, don't they get bored three years with them? Think about your favorite TV show. <laughs> you will watch those characters for how many years and you're vested in them, um, invested in them, and that is what it is there. Um, we have seen such growth with the kids in um, the progress coming off of a trimester of little to no probably learning in the spring, like for our first graders having missed a third of kindergarten, um, the, the gains they've made to, to kind of overcome that loss in learning, we are confident would not have been there if we did not last year get proactive and the administration led that for us saying we're gonna get we're gonna do something different so if we didn't have this we've talked we don't know what <laughs> where we'd be so um and this year we uh looked at math curriculum and elementary is going with a program called math expressions and that will be implemented next year so very i'm um, excited with the direction and the um i don't know it you know it costs a lot of money to adopt new curriculum but it's the best investment yeah. that you can have we along with the training. It. And we've had excellent training in the curriculum, so. I agree. Oh, and these we were gonna mention, we mentioned in the last group, if you notice these around our neck. Um, many of the classes have these um, front row speaker systems. Mrs. Irie started getting them for us, I think it was about three years ago, about four or five classrooms a year. And um, I had one in my previous room on the other end, and I moved this summer. And I was glad to get one in my new room, so thank you. Because I can't imagine teaching without it now. It saves your voice and it holds the kids' attention. So it was, what did you, was it you or Brandy said? They tested it out on kids who have hearing impairments and they found it raised learning for all students because the kids in the back can hear as well as the kid in the front. So um, I think we're continuing to put yes. things in more rooms. We talked earlier that the whole building should have that. Oh, got that covered. next year. But yeah. that's been a wonderful addition. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions for these ladies? Very nice. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. So, Jacob, you saw me. I know. Hey, Jacob, it's Old school classroom. Oh my god. This is my room. You gotta remember I didn't And this room has dimming. This for team. All right, we're on the home stretch. Remember earlier we talked about cutting rooms in half to make space. Um, if you step in here as, as we walk by, this was the teacher's lounge, which we put a wall in to make space for our tech guy who had been kicked out of several other places. So he's got a spot to do any replacement of work or do any tech orders. 
Um, this is also has a staff bathroom, washer dryer that are running, and then kind of a storage area. After that, we're gonna head on down to our sensory room, um, which is a hallway. And for students obviously with sensory needs, that used to be the locker room. So there is a shower in there that's used on occasion. There is a bathroom in there, but that's where our a PT, Luann Livingston, kind of is housed and services students, along with a place for anybody to go that might need some type of break. So feel free to look at our teacher's lounge. This is our fourth grade hallway on this classroom by the drinking fountains used to be a computer lab, which is now a first grade classroom that is being taught by our art teacher, Leah Keller. So again, feel free to stop in any of those rooms um, and then we're gonna head to the sensory room. Staff bathroom, storage in the back, teacher's workroom, an IT room behind. If you go to your right, that just winds us right back into the gym, and that'll end our tour. So we're going to wander through here, and please feel free to take a look at all the areas in there as well. Here's the sensory room. Okay. Shower room behind that door. I guess we won't open that. The sensory room. She had the lights on. It's her office back there. Sensory room. I remember to use the locker room. Yeah. A long time ago. corner here too I believe. Storage. Kiln.
your personal life to, to come and, and do a school activity like this. So we're grateful that you're here. Comments, questions, or concerns that anyone has? All right, what I'd like to do now is we, hopefully we have the names of people that have attended one or more of our community conversations. We are going to be reaching out to people or if you would like to continue the conversation, uh, we hope to meet within the next couple of weeks and develop a, a preliminary plan to present to the school board in May. We'd like to, to keep this moving. Um, so our school board meeting is May 10th, so we'd like to have a meeting before that and talk about the future of our facilities and try to think about our student population, the financial constraints we might be working with, and what we should look like as a district for the next 20 to 30 years. So I'm not going to put anybody on the spot and ask you to volunteer tonight. But if you would like to join us for continuing the conversation, we would welcome any input from, from anyone that's been involved. So either we'll reach out or you can reach out to us at the district office. Any other questions or concerns? I'd like to thank the teachers for being here tonight and sharing with us. So thank you, and uh, have a good night. It's snowing outside. <laughs>